Och nu till London, John Minson. Det är ett i vår serie om hur ett dataspel kommer till. Ladies and gentlemen, the bird again. This is John Minson reporting for Bit for Bit from London. Have you ever wondered where computer games come from? Maybe they just drop out of the sky. Or perhaps there are lines of slaves chained to their keyboards. Or perhaps they come from inside the heads of people like these. Electronic Pencil Company is one of Britain's leading programming teams. They work from a small studio in North London. Benny, how did you get into computing? Um, well, it started when I was at college. That's when I first met computers. And I bought a BBC computer, and I started playing games, really, on them. Started programming them, thought it was great fun. And when I left college, I got a job in commercial programming. That was a bit boring, and well, I soon left that. Became a professional games writer, and um, didn't like where I was working. So I left and started my own company up. Right, and that's Electronic Pencil Company? Yep. How many people are there here now? Um, four now, four all together. Two, two graphic artists, two programmers. Anna, how did you become involved in Electronic Pencil? Well, shortly after I met Ben, he asked me to do some graphics on a part-time basis, and it sort of progressed from there. Had you had any art training before? No, not computer graphics, but I had done a year at art college. It must be very different working on a screen than yes, on paper. It is, it is. But I caught on to it quite quickly and I'm pretty used to it now. So, what sort of things do you do? Well, Benny generally comes with some sketches he's done on the backs of envelopes and um, I take those, animate them using commercial art packages, design them in however many directions he wants them, and then we put them together at the end. So you're involved with the development of a game right from the start? Oh, yeah, yeah. So we all sit down together and talk it all out, decide. Look, I think, I think these drawings are really good. They could work. No, but it would be another graphical text adventure. We want to, want to break away from that mode. Well, we, need, we need another, another strategy game. Hmm. OK, let's put these away then. How about going back in the past, then? Yeah. Say, a game set in the castle, a medieval yeah. castle. Storm in the castle. Storm in the castle. Dungeons and Dragons. Got yeah, but let's put another thing. element of strategy in, because, I mean, we're, we're OK on that. We can do strategy games. Yeah. Let's combine strategy with adventure. Adventure strategy game. OK. Strategy with adventure. What about a group of characters? that you've got to get through the castle and you've got to control them. Yeah, OK. And how that's the strategy. How many characters? I don't know. Six? Six characters. I suppose that each one could have its own name on characteristics. And let's place them in a castle with lots of traps. Right. Play heavy on the traps as well. If, if the player controls, say, three or four, say six characters and then he gives each one orders and they carry them out in okay. some form and he has to basically keep control of his band of men because they can do their own thing. What? You mean they have their own their home intelligence, sort of intelligence and sort of like, yeah, yeah they okay. can. Okay, I think that's great. So, Wing, why don't you put it on paper, some, some of the thoughts we've discussed. Anna, go and take some photographs. Do some sketches as well, we'll combine it together, show the results to Chucky, and we'll yep. take it from there, yeah. okay? Okay. Jackie, when did you meet Electronic Pencil? Well, I first met Benny at the end of 1983, when he was working for Thorny MI, and he came to me uh, because he wanted to become a freelance developer. At that particular point, um, Island, uh, Island Records, that is, had a, a software arm, 
and they were looking for programmers of Benny's quality. He was, without doubt, one of the most, and still is, one of the most gifted developers that actually I represent. So, as an agent, they come to you with a game and you find somebody to sell it to? Yes, <laughs> simplistically, yes. Right, Jackie, uh, here's the initials back. Thank okay. you. Just briefly, um, it's a game set in a castle. Yes. What we call it, broadsword. It's an arcade adventure. Yes. So this is the castle. This is the real layout. Yes. The real castle. Yes. And we're dividing it up into uh, levels. How many? I think we'll have about six levels. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, each level will, will have its own puzzles. Yes. And it'll start off outside the castle, and as the play progresses, you'll get deeper and deeper. Harder as well. The game will get very hard towards the end. Yes. And, and you'll end up in the tower of the, the, of the, the castle. The, the tower there. Yes. And we'll probably have two levels. There's the tower. OK, what is the final objective? Well, the final objective is to gather the four pieces pieces of a lost sword of Albion. Yes. Um, they're going to be scattered throughout the castle. Um, but I think the important thing about this game is the way it's going to be represented on the screen. Yes. We're going to try and capture this adventure element, but mix it with the strategy. Yes. You obviously went to a real castle. Yes, we went to Walkworth Castle in Northumberland. We thought we'd choose a real castle because of the authenticity it would give us. We felt if we designed our own castle, it might be a bit too square and geometric and possibly a bit boring. We took the floor plans and we divided them up into levels. And then we took each level and divided them up into rooms. So, Benny, how do you get the design into the computer? Well, first thing, you've got to clear the design in your mind. And a bit of paper helps. Um, if you take the, the actual game, call, call this the game, you can split it up into its logical parts, for example, the title sequence, the introduction, and the various screens, call them, I don't know, A, B, and C. Once we've got these parts, we can then start connecting them up. How they'll actually be connected in the game, maybe the player presses fire on the joystick. He goes from the title to introduction. That's fine, that. Or if he dies, he goes to the end sequence. Once we know how the parts are connected, we can actually start coding them into the computer. So you just put empty subroutines and say, this is the title sequence, this is how it dies. This is where the game is actually played. Once that's there, it's just a case of filling in the gaps. It sounds simple. It isn't simple, and it doesn't work like that usually. <laughs> OK, I don't think it's quite working. What we have here is a castle, a bird's eye view of the castle, and the camera view, which is supposed to represent the castle. And I don't think these windows are big enough to show all the action. And I think they look a bit too plain. Sometimes these characters walk off when you don't expect them to. Yes, I don't like that. I think it's bad when you don't see all the action. So you're okay. not seeing enough. Okay, so we're going to change it. One of us is going to have to speak to Jackie. And since I thought it was turn, I'm not going to do it. Hi, Jackie. Yeah, everything's okay. Game's looking good. Um, well, we've actually decided to change it a bit. Well, some parts of it weren't looking the way we expected. And we thought, yeah, well, not to worry. It's not a major change. It's just the way it looks. It's the front end of the game. We're going to redesign the front end. It's going to look totally different. But it'll be all right. It's not going to slow things down. Don't worry. It's going to look brilliant. Can Benny på Electric Pencil Company lösa problemet med sitt nya spel Broadsword? Fortsättning följer nästa vecka.